Okay. Uh, the title of my uh, talk is Topography of Adaptation. Uh, native domestic animals in Sahara Kuchia and the natural environment. Um, today, uh, under the condition that uh, various uh, phenomena related with global warming are arising, uh, some measures such as reduction of gen uh, greenhouse gases are required. At the same time, uh, we have now many more occasion to hear such a phrase like adaptation to the environmental changes. Since Charles Darwin established the theory of evolution adaptation of physical functions and the patterns of behavior to the surrounding environment is considered to be essential for all living things. However, uh, adaptation is an ambiguous word. While it is a key concept on the consideration of relations between living things and the environment. On the other hand, it may casually reduce all the complexity of adaptational process to a simple phenomenon. It is not, all, it is not at all wrong to say that a living thing exists as what it is at the moment as a result of adaptation to the environment during evolution in the past, or that a living thing will survive in the future by means of adaptation to the changing environment either. But uh, the word adaptation could condense the complex process in the passage of time into an abstraction as a black box of the word. Uh, scientists of uh, uh, physiology, genetics, and or ecology would struggle to elucidate the complexity of adaptational process. From the point of view of humanities and social sciences, on the other hand, uh, the attempt to draw topography of adaptation may become a measure to cope with the ambiguity of the word adaptation. Uh, for example, in anthropology, topography is taken to be a means to describe the matters which are never measurable and indefinable. So fluid as they transform depending on relationship in the circumstances. But features surely shared commonly in particular society. The main point of my talk today is to draw topography of adaptation. Uh, that means that a gradation of consciousness of adaptation among people which affects the reality weaved by them. I would like to take food for thought from the Saha native domestic animals. Native domestic animals are less influenced by the modernist way of breeding which has been developed to improve the reproductive capacity of livestock animals, particularly in Western Europe. Uh, the process of domestication and the breeding of livestock animals is deeply related with adaptation to environment. Uh, it depends not only on the, on the temporal and the spatial 
elements of the environment. But on the on various operations of human beings under the social circumstances, I would like to trace the uncertain and the labile footsteps of the Saha native domestic animals, such as Yakuchen cattle and horses, Yakuchen horses. Before we enter into consideration of the native domestic animals, I would like to give an outline of stock raising in Saha. Historically, the number of cattle and horses in Saha has repeated inversion. As classic ethnographies show, in the early years of Saha life in the land of today's Yakutia, the number of horses far exceeded the number of cattle. According to the historical document, the number of cattle was about one third of horses in the late 17th century. However, after the 18th century, the number of horses decreased insomuch that they became available only to wealthy families in the 19th century. On the other hand, uh, cattle raising prevailed among people. It became uh, so common that even poor families borrowed cows from wealthier families and paid back by milk and tar, uh, frozen sour milk, in the end of the year. The number of cattle reached a peak at the time of the Russian Revolution, and its predominance continued through Soviet time. The turning point came after the collapse of the Soviet Union. Just after the collapse, cattle raising served as a bastion of subsistence for many rural residents but it was far above their ability to keep the same amount of livestock as uh, at soft horses. They couldn't handle it because the flow of funds, workforce, and machines from the government was stopped. And because fuel costs rapidly rose, the number of cattle decreased by half in the past three decades. On the other hand, the number of uh, horses changed differently. Even though it also shrunk for a decade after the fall of the Soviet Union, but it, but it grew after the uh, 2000s, and uh, now it is recovered almost the same level as before the fall. As you can see on the graph, sooner or later the number of horses is likely to exceed the number of cattle. The reason why the number of cattle and horses have changed in inversely may be found in the difference of raising style between them. Uh, cattle require intensive management from a large amount of hay making in summer to keeping cattle in cow shed during long winter season with a lot of services as feeding, milking, and cleaning of excrement. On the other hand, horses 
are raised by way of extensive farming. They are sent to graze into in open field all year round. It is not too much to say that horse raising doesn't require so much funds, workforce, and resources as cattle raising, and that is why the number of horses is growing, even though many of the younger generation don't like to continue farming and rural life. At the same time, however, uh, the extensive raising of horses may bring about the danger that the farming is easily affected by weather condition. If it has heavy snowfall in winter, horses cannot dig out grass under the snow. And uh, if the snowfall is too small, it also brings problem because the surface of land freeze solid and the ice seed would prevent horses to dig out grass. In both cases, horses suffer from starvation in winter and that may cause sharp drop of birth rate in the next spring. Uh, from this viewpoint, uh, cattle raising is more stable because a farmer can expect secure income as long as they keep sufficient amount of hay for winter during summer season. As you see, uh, there are several contrasting uh, characteristics between cattle and horses in Saha. By the way, uh, both cattle and horses have Saha native breed. These indigenous domestic animals draw attention as keepers of local endemism against non-native breed. What does the contrast between native and non-native breed bring to the contrast between cattle and horses? Do they converge in the common interest in the native breed or the contrast between native and non-native breed enlarges uh, the contrast of cattle and horses? That is the question. Now, I would like to examine the courses followed by Saha native domestic animals, Yakuchen cattle and horses, in turn. Then, I will pay attention particularly on the argument about their adaptation to the environment and consider how the gradation of the argument has affected uh, their contrastive relation. At the beginning of consideration about Saha native cattle, let me introduce an episode uh, some of you have watched the dis distinguished movie Toyon Quill. Uh, the director Eduardo Novikov told in an interview that he found a lot of trouble in establishing filming set and equi equipment at the location in a remote place of central Yakutia. There was no way to reach the place but by tractor, and they had to build a house and fences there from scratch. And they needed to bring cattle or with some amount of hay. He said, fortunately, uh, cows were found at El Elanka village from here, the horned actresses were carried by Kamas. But 
Elanka is far away from the filming location. Couldn't he find any cows else at nearer, nearer villages? As a matter of fact, the cows that Novikov took all the way from the far away village were Saha native domestic animal, so-called Yakuchen cattle. The scenario had the historical backdrop of the 1930s when almost all cattle in Saha were Yakuchen cattle. The rigorous director, Novikov, was willing to take a lot of trouble adhering to the historical accuracy. Yakuchen cattle are relatively small size and has features of short limbs, barrel like belly, black maho, and so on. The average milk produce is low, but the milk is high in fat as about 5%. The body surface is covered by long hair and thick fat under the skin. It can grow with only natural grass. Putting all things together, Yakuchen cattle are well adapted to the harsh subarctic weather condition of Saha. However, Yakuchen cattle were thoroughly replaced with European breed in Soviet era on ground of having low productivity. After the uh, collectivization of agriculture was launched in the 1930s, such breeds with large frame and high milk produce as Shimmental and Homogoli were introduced to Saha. Replacement with the uh, European breeds and their crossbreeding with Yakuchin cattle were systematically promoted for the purpose of improvement of productivity. In consequence, Yakuchen cattle were uh, pushed into near extinction by the end of the Soviet, Soviet time. At this moment, uh, about 1,500 head are raised at specially designated farms. Being concerned about decline of Yakuchen cattle, some of local researchers insisted on their conservation by emphasizing the advantage of being adapted to the harsh environment. For example, uh, Pyotr Apolonovich Romanov uh, referred in his monograph as follows. Yakuchen cattle being adapted to the local weather condition have very important features such as heavy built figure, bearing up under meager diet, giving high fat milk, and being easy to fat up. Georgi Pavlovich Kalotov carried out comparative research of Yakuchen cattle and crossbred cattle and concluded that crossbred cattle cannot adapt to the condition of the natural environment and the dietary intake in Yakuchen. While on the other hand, party-oriented scientists and the policy makers pursued crossbreeding. In the backdrop, there was a big influence of uh, Trofim Denisovich Lysenko, who had dominated the Soviet agricultural policy 
using his original uh, breeding theory under the consecutive regime of Stalin and Khrushchev. Lysenko negated the theory of classic genetics and insisted that uh, characters of animals and plants can be changed through environmental effect and human control. Particularly, he affirmed the effectiveness of crossbreeding for improvement of productivity. His experimentation of cattle breeding was highly acclaimed by political leaders, including Khrushchev. Not surprisingly, uh, the demand for conservation of Yakuchen cattle was dismissed, and crossbreeding with European breed was promoted according to the policy of Lysenko and those who followed him. It was only in the 1980s when uh, he when the measures for conservation of Yakuchen cattle began to be taken. At the time, uh, there was a trend to pay more attention to the uh, sorry to the uh, biodiversity, and at the at the same time, uh, awareness of food security increased. FAO, Food and Agricultural Organization, jointly with the United Nations Environmental Program, calls the expert consultation for management of global animal genetic resources. In USSR, uh, the National Committee of Science and Technology together with the Ministry of Agriculture and the Academy of Science got the Gene Bank project started in 1981. This movement accelerated after the fall of the Soviet Union. In 2001, uh, the law on conservation and uh, utilization of gene bank of uh, Yakuchen cattle was enacted. Now, Yakuchen cattle are raised at the officially designated farms and uh, their branches for breeding by means of natural budget. Looking back the history of Yakuchen cattle, we are reminded that there has been a disproportion in awareness of adaptation to the environment. There was a discrepancy between the proponents of Yakuchen cattle conservation and the promoters of crossbreeding in Soviet time. Uh, some of Saha local researchers emphasized the importance of being adapted to the environment in the features of Yakuchen cattle. While party oriented researchers and policy makers ignored it and pushed the interests of productivity. Now, the characteristic of being adapted to the environment is highly evaluated in the government program uh, coordinated with the global movement. Whereas the most local farmers are indifferent to the features. They regard raising Yakuchen cattle as just unprofitable. Meanwhile, the other Saha native domestic animal, 
shows a quite different picture. Let us move on to the situation of Yakuchin horses. Yakuchin horses uh, have high fat under the skin and long hair on the surface. Like Yakuchin cattle, Yakuchin horses too can bear poor condition of dietary intake, uh, grazing under snow, even in winter. Overall, Yakuchin horses are well adapted to the subarctic climate. Tracking back the history of Yakuchin horses, we can find early reference to crossbreeding with other breeds in the beginning of the 19th century. It is said that crossbred horses between Yakutian horses and Russian, Russian breeds were quite popular among well-off merchants. This tendency uh, toward crossbreeding uh, continued for, for a while after the Russian Revolution. The National Breeding Center for Improvement of Horses was built in Yakutsk. Intriguingly, the native perception of crossbreeding came to rise as a, collective, uh, a collectivization of agriculture was promoted in Yakutia. Uh, the negative perception of uh, crossbreeding came to rise as a collectivization of agriculture was promoted in Yakutia. On the ground of the result of the field study, conducted in the wide range of Yakutian territory, Mikhail Ivanovich Logalevich wrote the monograph in which he negated the effectiveness of crossbreeding of Yakutian horses. According to him, the ultimate goal of breeding is to produce a unique breed adapted to the local climate, land, feed, economic situation. He says, it is meaningless to crossbreed Yakutian horses, which are already well adapted to cold weather region and given well-built body. Mikhail Fyodorovich uh, Gavishev who established the basis of the study of horse raising, horse raising, referred in his monograph that in the result of underestimation of the fact that Yakutian horses are the treasure, treasurable indigenous horses, crossbreeding has been conducted uh, randomly without taking any measures to improve the feeding and raising environment. In many cases, this has done harm to the Yakut horse raising. This negative view of crossbreeding of Yakutian horses taken by the prestigious researchers as Logalevich and the garbage has prevailed in general. Gavishev evaded the offensive for crossbreeding by the Luisenko's campaign in referring to Luisenko's own words to emphasize the role of environment for stock raising. 
conservation of Yakutian horses didn't contradict Lysenko's policy because uh, they were the precise breed that can make good use of the Yakutian environment. Thus, the conservation of Yakutian horses were enshrined into law in March 1963. The Yakut ASSR, uh, Supreme Soviet Law, on the measure of development of horse raising at collective farms and state farms, oriented the horse use so that it should be as food rather than as working. The law also gained greater control of breeding of Yakutian horses and uh, forbade uh, crossbreeding except as the designated farms. In this way, uh, there were no major discrepancy regarding Yakutian horses in the consciousness of their adaptation to the, to the environment. Unlike the case of Yakutian cattle, the idea that Yakutian horses are adapted to the harsh Yakutian environment has been shared by all as a common sense. Meanwhile, there are two shared features in the view of in the view on Yakutian horses. Firstly, uh, much attention is paid to internal sort internal sorting and uh, identification of types. Rogalevich divided Yakutian horses into two categories, northern horses and the southern horses. Many northern horses have big body and white coat, while southern horses are smaller and have various coat colors as brown and gray, as well as white. Gavishev further divided southern horses into original small type and crossbred bigger type. At this moment, the crossbred uh, bigger type of southern horses are distinguished from Yakutian horses. They were certified as Prilena horses and Megajek horses in 2011. And the northern horses are divided into two types, Yana types and Kolima types. So, two types of northern horses, in addition to the smaller type of southern horses or native type, there are three types of Yakutian horses in all. The types are sorted by area where they are raised. That means color of coat and the size and the shape of various parts of body are regarded to be affected by environment. Secondary, what is shared in the view on Yakutian horses is the pursuit of origin. Various hypotheses about uh, from fear Yakutian horses came has brought even fierce dispute. The roots of Yakutian horses, which are presumed in the dispute, are roughly divided into two regions, the north and the south. In the 19th century, geographer Cherusky made a hypothesis that 
the roots of Yakuchen horses uh, can be uh, found in the ancient tundra horses. Seroshevsky, following Cherusky, presumed that the ancient tundra horses were mixed with Mongolian horses, which are taken by the ancestors of the Saha people from the south and the constituency were made into Yakuchen horses. Logan Levich and Gabishev shared their opinions that the northern Yakuchen horses had the origin in the ancient Tundra horses, while the southern Yakuchen horses have the roots of Mongolian horses. The most active proponent of the North origin theory is Pyotr Alexievich Lazarev, who insisted that Yakuchen horses are the direct descent of the ancient Tundra horses. Meanwhile, an in international genet genet gen geneticist group uh, compared the gene taken from the fossil of the ancient tundra horses and the gene from Yakuchen horses. They declared that Yakuchen horses have no connection with the ancient tundra horses and, and that the roots of Yakuchen horses should be found in Mongolian horses. But some researchers doubt the, the accuracy of the sample taken from Yakuchen horses. The dispute has not ended yet. Comparing the two Saha native domestic animals, Yakuchen cattle and Yakuchen horses, we can realize that uh, they illustrate completely different topographies. Concerning uh, Yakuchen cattle, their feature of being adapted to the environment was hardly considered being given pre uh, precedence to productivity. As the Yakuchen horses, the adaptation to the environment has been held as a crux in a consistent way. The pursuit of internal sorting and the passion of the roots of Yakuchen horses have been built on the base of their adaptation to the Yakuchen land. On the other hand, the identity of Yakuchen cattle has been taken for granted and rarely questioned. The gradation of consciousness of adaptation and identification makes the particular topography of the Saha native domestic animals. What this topography shows us. In place of conclusion, we can say that the difference in treatment of the native domestic animals is reflected on the contrast of the cattle and the horses enlarging the gap between them. Despite the native domestic animals are surely adapted to the environment. Yakuchen horses remained and Yakuchen cattle disappeared. The different destiny of these native domestic animals may be related with the trend of the of rise and fall of stock raising today. Thank you for attention. That's all.